as REST services continue to gain popularity, you will be faced with questions on whether or not you should make server-side HTTP request calls or develop a native client. In this screencast, we will show you how to consume a RESTful service with Spring's REST template. REST template is a class used to make HTTP REST calls. It is similar to JDBC template and JMS template, where these abstractions encapsulate lower-level calls that can be performed with libraries like Apache HTTP components. SparkFun is a neat product that allows people to push data to public free locations for consumption. If you are looking for data or want the ability to store data via REST calls, this might be an option. We found a data stream called WIMP Weather Station that provides weather readings from on top of somebody's roof in Colorado. We will set up a project with Spring Boot and utilize the test class created. Let's make a request to the URI and view the response as a string. Creating a new class REST template, we will call git for entity passing in a URL and the class we want the response to be returned as. In this instance, it will be a string. We specified a JSON string, but that doesn't do us much good. We want to convert the JSON string to a Java object. What we need to do is unwrap the JSON into multiple Java objects, which is kind of tedious. We will create a condensed view of the objects and fields for the requests by first creating a Spark response wrapper, a Spark stream wrapper, doc wrapper, and a WIMP weather location wrapper. You will notice in each wrapper object, we included JSON ignore properties, which is an indicator to Jackson to fail if an unknown property is found in the deserialization process. Next, we'll replace the string dot class with a spark response wrapper class, where Jackson will know to walk the JSON tree populating the Java objects. In the event that your service call fails or the marshalling of JSON to the Java object throws an exception, you may want to log the error or retry the request. If you aren't familiar, the HTTP response delivers a status code which indicates whether a specific request has been successfully completed. Luckily, response entity adds the status code just for that reason. We will reference a status code enum constant provided by Spring and check the status code returned in the response. This screencast is a high level simple configuration and just scratches the surface on how to make a HTTP request in Java. Other items to investigate is making calls with request methods such as git, post, and put, configuring proxy, dealing with SSL certificates, connection pooling, configuring timeouts on the request, and the list goes on. As you are making your way through this tutorial and implementing a solution, be aware that this is the tip of the iceberg, so be sure to reach out to your web infrastructure teams for support. Hope you enjoyed today's Level Up. Have a great day.